Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Lossus Mini, a true nerd, and welcome back to Hitman 2, where, of course, today we will be diving into Miami. But first, you may notice, yes, the servers are online now. Marvellous. And that means I can actually now see how exactly this game fits together insofar as, yeah, how Hitman 1 screws into Hitman 2. And uh, it's a little bit on the interesting side. You see, back in Hitman 1, I was actually up to mastery level 20 in all these levels, and that actually did take a fair bit of time to do. Now, that does not carry over. So if you're mastery level 20 in the first game, you do actually have to replay through to unlock the unlocks again. Except I swear they've slightly remixed them, because Napoleon Blown Apart did not used to become available at level 10 in Paris. I'm almost certain he was tied to something rarer and more specific than that, but... Here he is at level 10. I know he's moved. I know you didn't used to be there. The suits are an interesting blend too. So for having Hitman 1, I think everybody gets the Requiem suit. I've got the Black Winter suit, which needed like, I think, 20 successful elusive targets to get in the first game. So I don't know if I've only got that, because that's what I did in the first game, or if everyone gets that. I'd be kind of annoyed if everyone gets that, because this took a lot of flipping effort to unlock in the first game. And also, everyone just gets the clown, the raven, and the cowboy for reasons, I suppose. Anyway, enough of that. Let's crack on to the next mission, the finish line. Because, yeah, New Zealand was kind of a training mission, so this is really uh, the first mission proper in Miami. Now, some of you may have seen quite a bit of this level already, because it's the one level where they showed off a fair bit of gameplay footage. I've been avoiding that as best I can, so this is all going to be brand new to me. So, oh yeah, first proper level, let's go. Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is the annual Global Innovation Motor Race in Miami, Florida. After analyzing the data from Reynard's computer, the case is clear. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox, head of robotics developer Kronstadt Industries. A visionary inventor and technological innovator, Robert Knox has spearheaded Kronstadt Industries to the bleeding edge of technological development. His equally brilliant daughter, Sierra, is not only a financial wizard, but also a fiercely competitive race car driver with a fiery temper to match. Kronstadt enjoys enormous popularity with global consumers. However, few are aware that the company is also one of the world's leading suppliers of next-gen military tech. Last year, despotic ruler Jin Po employed prototype Kronstadt drones against peaceful civilian protesters in the now infamous Tungyan Valley incident. And although it has yet to be proven, there is little doubt that the Noxes personally brokered the deal, making them complicit in a war crime. It is unclear why the Noxes would betray their masters, but likely the fear of being next put on the Shadow Client's hit list has pressured them to cut a deal with the enemy. Undoubtedly, with Kronstadt Industries on their side, the militia will increase their attacks tenfold. And so our contract obligates us to retire Robert and Sierra Knox and contain the damage they may inflict on Providence. I will leave you to prepare. All right, we got ourselves two targets. Race car driver and her father, an industrialist of some description. Got it. And uh, always check because, yeah, you can get a bit more information about these people if you just kind of click on them. So, uh, yeah, let's get any uh, intel here. At the age of 17, she was deeply involved with competitive short distance running and worried that she might lose to a high school competitor, paid a man to ensure the competitor didn't run that afternoon. The competitor was chained to a wheelchair for the rest of her life, while Sierra won the race easily. Blimey, okay, so this woman is brutal. And we can reasonably expect if she is a competitive race car driver, there's a chance therefore she might engage in a bit of sabotage of the other competitors, something to keep an eye on. As for Knox, the man's a robotic and AI genius, but not actually that clever in more practical ways. So yeah. He was originally involved in many small startups, but they all failed due to his inherent interest in the product rather than business developments. All right, interesting. So he might be a bit more naive, in fact. In fact, yes, his obsession with the product is the reason he's got those scars there. So he was experimenting with a new nitrogen boost applicator while driving his prototype and something went horribly wrong. Horribly burned and despite the best efforts of the gamma surgeons, he carries the scars from the accident to this day. However, 
Another race driver was also involved. He sued Knox for damages, but lost the trial. Russ now works for Global Innovation Race and is known to hold a grudge. Ooh. All right. So, Maxwell Rutter might well be at this event. Someone to actually keep an eye out for. Again, we might be able to get him to do the dirty for us if we just, you know, give him the opportunity. So, suit. Obviously not the Florida fit. No, 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 no. Let's go for Marvelous. And this is unfortunately, yeah, a secured area. So at the moment, 47 isn't allowed to carry anything with him at all. He's just going to arrive, uh, yeah, completely unarmed. But I will be able to smuggle one item in. Only one spot I can smuggle to, however. Yeah, the Bayside Centre. I assume that's a car park of some description. Right. What do we actually want to get in with us? Because uh, I can only have one thing. Let's just bring in three coins, which apparently I'm not allowed to have on my person. <laughs> I feel like having three coins in my pocket would be a thing that would be totally allowed, but... Okay, game, your rules, I suppose. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby Expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. The Kronstadt RK Mark III has seen fierce competition from the Chinese Kowoon Heavy Industries' new racer. Moses Lee, CEO of Kowoon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. The stakes are as high as they can get. Here we go. And we can be pretty confident that, yeah, something's going to happen. She's going to try and cheat to make sure that she wins. All right. Here we go. And I do not have a bag, so I do not need to go through bag check. Now, be on the listen out here, because various people are just going to start talking about important things that we kind of need to know. By the way, what's down this staircase that's just out of the way here? Got, ooh, Bayside's tunnel. Hello, man, who's playing things? And this will be the... Ah, this will be the expo. Fine. So there's a little kind of underground walkway there. So presumably, we've got, yeah, the racetrack that side, uh, the expo this side. That is Ted Mendez, one of the country's most influential military-grade moneymen. This must be connected to Kronstadt. Hello. Phil, it's Ted here. Just returning your call before heading over to the Expo building to meet Knox for the new combat android presentation. No, not yet. I'm letting him stew a little. The guy's a genius, and you know what they're like. This would be lacking any discipline or respect for other people. Last time I tried to have a meeting with him, he had me sitting in a room for four hours before canceling. I'll head up when I feel like it. All right, I'll call you after the presentation. Speak then. All right. So this guy, gonna be useful as a disguise. So probably a good thing would be, yeah, find an opportunity to get this guy down and have his disguise off him. Question is, how are we going to get him down? Any chance you're going to very conveniently just, you know, go for a bathroom break or something in a quiet corner? Because that would be flipping perfect. Hello, is this going to be maybe a good spot? Yeah, this could be a good spot. Hello. Right, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I've got... I don't have a coin yet. Um, I need something to... Ooh, I need something to, to pick up or something. Can I just grab... Yep. Shovel. This is fine. And now, just quickly, toss the shovel. Has that got his attention? Yeah. That's right. Come and investigate that shovel for no well-explained reason. That'll do the job. Now we just quickly bring you down but we don't kill you obviously is anyone gonna see this oh well there's my target my target is technically a car actually i think if i put you in here but don't turn it on you don't actually get shredded i don't think you do 
Okay, well this is a fun way to test this, because this here is indeed a shredder, but this is fine. We're just going to put you in there. Do not turn it on. Okay, that's fine. I think I could now choose to turn this on, right? And yes, I could shred him. I am not going to, but I've now got myself a very useful disguise. Fine. This is probably an excellent thing to start off with. And yeah, you may notice uh, that I actually don't actually have a proper quest marker. This is how I like setting my opportunities or story missions or whatever they're called. What I actually tend to do is have them set to minimal. Which is I get told what the next step I need to do is. So in this case, go up to the reception. But it doesn't actually give me an actual marker for it. So I still need to actually figure it out for myself. So I feel like that's the best way to play Hitman. It's a bit too easy if you've actually got quest markers telling you exactly where to go. So there's the event entrance right over there. Walkway underneath the Bayside Centre entrance. And this will be... Yeah, that'll be Robin Knox in there. So this is where the expo's happening. Gotcha. We've also got ourselves a bunch of... Yeah, event entrances right there. Sideway in, but you'll need some form of proper security disguise right over here. And yeah, we've got this area over here, marvellous. So that's the signature suit dropped off right there. So let's not worry about the actual racetrack for the time being. Let's start off with Robert Knox. But first, we've actually got a... Ooh, a marina park. Okay, I like the sound of a marina park. I'm just going to go for a nice stroll, see what's going on here. Because these reporters might be useful for something, potentially. Well, nothing of particular note as far as I can see, but there is a door here, but keycard locked. So, without a keycard, can't get through there. Fine. Good to know that is, yeah, this part of the world right here. We got ourselves a lovely door. This is a lovely level. I do like how Hitman these days is so colourful. So colourful and so bright. It's lovely. Absolutely flippin' lovely. Right. Keep going through here because, yeah, if I've got an appointment and this guy specifically said I'm going to make this guy wait, then it doesn't matter if, you know, I take my time exploring. We've got, ooh, burgers. What? No, can't fool around with that. We didn't get the replacement pressure valve, so I literally duct taped everything together just now. You could fry everyone on stage if the pressure gets too high. But Rudder asked me to test it. If he asks, just tell him I got Jeez. it under control. Whatever you do, don't touch the setup. Okay, gotcha. All right. So potentially we could fry this woman with the actual, yeah, fireworks on the podium. Though she's not going to be the only person on the podium because there's going to be three people on the podium. So we'll need to make sure. Ooh, we might need to actually make sure she wins. <laughs> Yeah, engineer it so she wins, especially, and unlock door. Can't do that because, yeah, in this game, you don't actually have the lockpick yet. I'm going to unlock the lockpick down the line. Now, I'm going to work under the assumption that this guy doesn't count as, like, staff, so he can't just enter, right? Hey, you, no, no, no. You can't come through no, yeah, I thought not, because technically, he isn't staff. He's like a military contractor, so he can't enter any of the private areas. But just keep looping around here because there might be a bit of the fence I could... Actually, climb now. It's going to be way too high. That is locked. And... Oh, hang on. If I just vault over here. Here we go. Got ourselves a back way in. Fine. So, hang on. Over on the map here. We've got ourselves... Yeah. Over at the back. If you don't want to bother going through the front entrance, loop all the way around to this area. We've actually got ourselves, yeah, something I can actually do something with. Let's just head up here. And yes, I can actually open this from the inside. So that's now permanently unlocked. So where am I right now? Is there anyone? Don't see anyone else around here. Good. This is marvellous. Put my hammer away, by the way. I don't need that just yet. So let's just, oh. Okay. Couple of people around here. I could probably bring one of them over. And get a disguise, and there's my target. I like my target being a car. That's good. So I've got myself, yeah, an actual proper, like, bit of crowbar. And I am right here. Oh, this would be a perfect sniper spot. If I felt like sniping, this would be a perfect spot for it. Okay. Remember that's there, but let's actually get out of here. Let's have a nice little chat to Mr. Knox first. And hang on. Yeah, for the time being, Sierra Knox is currently in second position. Now, there might be a clock just kind of quietly ticking by while I'm doing all of this. Because at a certain point during the race, like, you know, ten minutes in or whatever, 
something's going to happen. Like, the other guy's going to have a puncture or mysteriously explode, and that means Nox is going to win. Because based on everything I've read regarding her personality, there's no chance that she's not going to win. She's going to engineer it so she will. And by the way, ooh, I can just blend in with a newspaper down here if that's what I want to do. No need for that. Let's go over to the reception and see where this brings me. Oh, and this is fun. That's one of those little things where you can just stand and have yourself in a weird, funny scene. Excellent. I approve of the fact that anyone's allowed to blend in like that all the time. Now, one other thing to actually pay attention to around here. We've got ourselves parking. Now, hello. Yeah, the expo center. That is, hang on, that door is... Yeah, that's another key card reader, so you need a key card. Now, parking. Is this parking that I'm allowed into? Oh. I'm here now. Ready to meet up with Sierra Knox over at the hotel. Yeah, after the race. I just got to pick up the documents from my van, but um, I had to knock out a guy and steal his flamingo outfit. <laughs> now I can't find my car keys. Yeah, I know it's dumb. I think I lost him in the scuffle, but the real mascot is still over there. If I don't get them, I've got no evidence. Bye bye money. I don't know. I, I, I need to figure something out. I'll talk soon. Can you do me a favor? Go check if my keys are over there. The guy's crazy and I don't dare go over there. You look pretty tough. All right, I'm going to go get myself some keys. Sure, use my instinct vision. There is indeed some keys. I'll be having that, thank you. Lovely, key obtained. Okay, so that guy, some form of documents pertaining to Sierra. So apparently this is a blackmailer. She has some colourful enemies. So a disgruntled Kronstadt employee has acquired some dirt on Sierra Knox and intends on blackmailing her. Disguised as one of the mascots, he plans to meet Sierra by the old motel. Okay, well, before we do that, let's actually find the... Oh, I'm not supposed to be here, sorry. Let's just actually, yeah, find this here van, open it up and get this information because I would like to read it myself figure out what's going on here. We've also got a back room the other side over here. Yeah, plenty of places to hide bodies around here. And hello, what's this? Ah, event crew. Fine. So over here in the parking garage, there's an event crew that's very easy to get hold of. And if I want to grab someone's attention, I can turn that hoover on to draw someone around to this, which I'm going to assume would, yeah, draw your attention right there. But let's not worry about that for now. I'm happy in this disguise. But, you know, before I head over there, let's just quickly go and find that van. Hey, yo, did you find some keys over there? The race is entering its final lap, 47. Ah, yes, indeed. The race does actually have a certain amount of time to it. So the race is about to be over. So anything I was going to do with the race can't do any more at this point. And, ah, here we go. Got myself the actual uh, items. So now I've got some items. So this was my van over here. Question is... Where's this guy's van that he actually just mentioned? Ah, it'll be that van over there in that case. Gotcha. So don't mind me just going over to my not at all suspicious van, which is going to be... No, no, no. Don't do that, though I could break it open if I wanted to instead. There we go. Open that up. And incriminating evidence. Okay. Now, how incriminating is this? A pile of Kronstadt documents that look like they might be useful to an investigative journalist or a blackmailer. A note attached to the documents reads, Sierra Knox, after the race, next to the hotel, bring documents. I'd like to think that's not supposed to be literal, it's just supposed to be figurative. Like, you know, be calm, be relaxed, be the flamingo. 47, the race is over. Sierra will be coming off the track any time now. Right, so Sierra's coming off the track. I've just accidentally got myself recorded right there. Sorry, my mistake, so I'll need to sort that out. We've got more. Hang on, where am I right now exactly? Ah, that goes up. Right, so that would lead me inside the walls of the Expo Center. Fine, so this is a way of accessing the Expo Center, even if you don't actually have the General's Disguise. And of course, if I gave the Flamingo the key, he'd walk back to the van and there'd probably be a good quiet moment to get him down. Gotcha. And here we go. Sierra Knox has now left her car. And I'm assuming right now she's like on the podium or something. 
logically, she'll go to the motel and then just stay there waiting for the flamingo, but the flamingo isn't coming, or at least he's not coming anytime soon. So if she's just going to stay there and the flamingo's not coming, hopefully I can go and deal with that later. For the time being, I'm still dressed as a general. Let's actually get in here, check in with reception, see what's going on. So, hello, I've got an appointment with Mr. Knox. The demonstration is scheduled to take place on the upper floors. Please feel free to use the stairs right over there. Yeah. All right, so, stairs right over there, executive floor. But before we do that, check out the rest of the building, because, yeah, we've got ourselves... Am I allowed here, by the way? Am I just allowed to walk in? Yep, this is fine. So this is just the ground floor. So, big, beautiful car. And more big, beautiful cars. And, ooh, robots. You are definitely that military contractor and field artillery officer, skill level four. Please don't blow me up. I like that. You walk up to him, he actually identifies you based on your disguise. Ooh, it's the thing from the Gamma Hospital that we used to murder a guy over in Japan. That's cool. And yeah, it's the AI thing as well. Ooh, that's nice. Robert Knox has a race car on display in the expo building. The show staff is under strict instructions to summon him at any sign of malfunction. Apparently, Knox trusts no one to fix his car but him. Hmm. Perhaps it's time to poke around under the hood, 47. Okay. So, anything wrong with this car, this guy comes down. Gotcha. Very, very useful indeed. By the way, am I technically allowed back? Yes, apparently being back here is fine. So... Even without the general's outfit, that's a way to summon him down to this floor. And this over here is... Yeah, that's expo staff only. Beyond there. Fine. Now that will lead back to the stairs going up to the executive floor. No worries about that. And this is... Ooh. Employees only, you say? Well, no one's technically here to stop me. And actually, I'm not marked as trespassing right now. Which is kind of odd, because it just said... Employees only. And ooh, an aquarium. I do love an aquarium. Ah, wait, of course. I'm allowed to go wherever the hell I feel like it because I've got authorization to be in this here building. Okay, I see. So I can access all the backstage areas and hello, security. Now this. This I could do with, yes, because I need to... Oh, that guy's asleep right now. If I could just destroy those tapes, that'd be perfect. Nice and quiet. No need for you to wake up, my friend. There we go. And back out again. Lovely. Recording's taken care of. And now, doesn't matter that I've been recorded in the past. And this place also comes with event security. So if I wanted security outfit, that's where we get that. And this... Leads out to the parking garage. Okay, so nice, easy access from the building itself out into the garage or vice versa. Right, in that case, now, upstairs. I know I'm allowed straight through here. Let's go find Mr. Kronstadt, because that seems like a very, very nice, easy way of taking him out. Because surely he'll want to do the meeting by himself. Alright, second floor. Right this way, sir. You want me to go that way, do you? Do you mind if I go this way? No? Yes? Okay, you don't seem to mind if I just head over to hospitality. But at this point, we're into... Yeah, actually, locked up with key cards. Yeah, I can just head round in this direction, around the lobby. So we're... Yeah, okay. We're actually above the expo right now. Uh, how about... Oh, you've literally got a gun out. I'm guessing I'm not allowed in here, right? Yes? No? Maybe... Okay, apparently I would be, but you're probably going to show me that yourself. Oh, hello! Ted Mendez, right? I wasn't told you were here, but I'm glad to see you. Let's go. Let me show you the future. Alright, show me the future, please. What do we have to see and how dangerous is it? Because I'm going to assume fairly dangerous. Ah, Ted, I can finally see you. I guess traffic was rough. Ah, never mind. Let me show you everything. I'm gonna say something provocative now, Ted. War is going out of fashion. It's dirty, it's just plain bad PR. Nobody wants to exchange their children and loved ones for flags and medals anymore. All right, Mendez, it's very straightforward. Let me show you. I just pick any of the pictures on the desk, then I use the scanner to upload the biometric data. 
and Palace will do the rest. Target acquired. WB. Obviously, the final system won't rely on you manually feeding it biometric data. This is still a prototype. This is a pivotal moment in modern conflict solution, Ted. Palace is entirely foolproof. All you need is to pick a photo from the table and scan it just like I showed you. It's perfectly safe. Go ahead. Make my day. Aha. Uh -huh. So if I were to have acquired a photo of him from somewhere then that would probably be a very, very good solution. So, okay then, as I do not have that right now, I guess I will show them B. Scan picture, target of dummy. I swear I just picked up B, but whatever. Any image on the table, scan target and activate A. Well, how's that for impressive? Amazing, I know. And just think how much more we can accomplish together. My brains, your money. Hang on. I've just got one thing I'm kind of curious about. If I was to lure someone over towards A here. Yeah, that's right. How about one of you just goes and investigates what's going on over there, which happens to be right in front of A. Right. Scan. A. There we go. And he wasn't in quite the right position. I wonder if you could do that. Just literally lure them over with, uh, yeah, a coin or what have you. Anyway, sorry, I'm supposed to be following Mr. Knox, I think. So if you have any questions or want to see anything again, just let me or McKinnis know. I'll let you hang out and look at everything for yourself. Hey, don't be a stranger, Ted. Okay, so he's naffing off to his top floor now. But if I can just get a photo of him, I can just actually basically use his own machines to murder him, which strikes me as kind of hilarious. Now... Am I allowed to just go where I want? Yeah, it seems like it. On this floor, I'm good everywhere. One of these officers, there might be a photo of him somewhere. Aha. Okay, front office upstairs, which the general's allowed in. Key card. Don't feel like I need that for the most part, but could be of use. Oh, hello there. A photo of Robert Knox in the conference room. Collecting pictures of celebrity entrepreneurs now, 47. Hmm. What are you thinking? Well, you know what, Diana? I might just have a plan here. I might just have a very, very, very good plan, in fact. It's a bit of an obvious one, but it's kind of hilarious, so that's fine. Now, where's the man himself? Oh, he's over there. Conveniently right next to his robot room. Spot on. I'm ready for another demonstration, Mr. Knox. Great, Ted. Great. I knew you were just playing hard to get. Let's do it. Yeah, how about you just do that thing where you stand in front of Palace and I show it photos of totally not you. Ultrasonic 3D information capture ensures the right targets are taken down every time. It's so good, I'm willing to stake my life on it. Well, I'm so glad you decided to do precisely that. Here's a quick photo of you. And... Go to hell. Knocks down. There now for the heir to the Kronstadt Empire. And everyone's everyone's very calm about that. <laughs> yeah, everyone's decided to be really damn calm. I'm just gonna walk out actually. I've decided I don't want to buy any of those robots. They kind of suck actually. Yes. Now before we head on though, I'm still allowed to be here. So up to the top floor. Can I be here? Uh, no, no. Sorry, sorry. My mistake. That, that's okay. Sorry, didn't realise I wasn't allowed up here. What is up there in that case? Now you've told me I'm not allowed to be up there. I really want to be up there. Here we go. There should be another staircase around the back of the android showroom. Alright. Let's go and have a little look, see what's going on there in that case. Yep, here we go. Back office over here. Got ourselves an option to explore. Now this area, I ain't supposed to be in... More rat poison, by the way. So, if I were to be able to, yeah, lure one guard into here, that would be spot on. There we go. Got one of their attention. Just let one person go and investigate that nice and quick. He goes in there. I nip round here. Bring this guy down nice and quiet. And we got ourselves the right disguise. 
Now, some people will see through that disguise, some people won't. So, let's just quickly make our way over here into a nice quiet side area where that guy won't see a thing. Okay, top floor, important. Let's see what we got in here then. So, private gym. Very, very cool indeed. Okay, and oh, no, that's a mirror. That's a mirror, fine. Remember, guards can use mirrors too. And now, hang on, which way are you go, my good man? You're heading over there. Meaning this way looks like it's pretty safe for the time being. Okay, have a little loopsy round and aha, we've got ourselves helicopter. Now that'd be a pretty badass escape, yes. Uh, am I allowed to... Okay, I could break that open with a crowbar, probably a bad idea though. I'm probably allowed in here though. Yes, this all seems absolutely fine. Security office, shotgun, probably another chance to take out, yeah, the actual security cameras if I needed to, but I don't need to, we are good. What's the purpose of this? Because, yeah, head up to the top floor, and we've got ourselves a missing electronic access dongle. And by the way, no. There's a fair bit of confetti going on over there, but that is not where she is right now. She's not hanging out with the car, presumably because she lost. Yeah, there we go. She did indeed come in second. Also, very conveniently, in his office bathroom, apparently he has eye drops. I think someone must have mentioned that in passing in the background. I just missed it. So, poison those, nice and easy. Okay. Now, where exactly is the dongle for doing whatever that is? And here we go. Robert's office is right here up on this floor. Bunch of scientists doing some number crunching. Watch out for security guard who can totally see through my disguise because he actually knows what uh, the other bodyguards are supposed to look like. Loop around the outside uh, him. Okay, fine. And this gives me access to golf club. Ah, by any chance, electronic dongle. Fine, nice and easy to get hold of that. Wait for this guy to make a move again and then we can just leave this office. Then time to find out what that quasar thing does because that does sound kind of awesome. Here we go. He's on the move. Loop around the back of him, straight back out again, spot on. So, what does this thing do? A satellite control system. Sabotage satellite control system. Okay, but what's being controlled by satellite, precisely? Communication breakdown. Hmm. I'm not- ah, wait, hang on. Hang the flip on. Follow these here wires, and we'll presumably find what that's going towards. And I'm going to guess that's going straight into, yes, that's going straight into the office and all the telemetry. Break that down, they can't feed proper information to her, she might just spin out and crash or something. Yes, that makes sense. And here, by the way, are the eye drops. Hmm, are those eye drops, 47? Looking over Knox's medical files, I see a prescription for medication for chronic dry eye syndrome. Apparently, he's sensitive to low humidity areas. Like rooms with the air conditioning turned to high, for instance. Ah, so we can't just poison them. We've actually got to exacerbate his condition by, yeah, turning up the aircon too high. Still, I've decided I now know how I'm leaving this level when it comes to it. Oh yeah, I'm totally flipping leaving on his private helicopter. 100 flipping percent. Ah, he's also got an assistant by the looks of it, which is of interest. So, you my good man, his assistant. I'm guessing that you are going to be useful for something special, because you can see through my disguise and you've got a special unique disguise. Ah, but McInnes's note on philosophy. Hello. How does that help me? Derek McInnes, chief android engineer at Kronstadt, apparently keeps a series of personal journals. In this one, he explores his own existence in what can only be described as high school level philosophy mediocre thinking. Apparently, McInnes is convinced that humans soon will be able to live beyond the flesh, and he muses about the state of consciousness, and in particular, sexual activity and the nature of partnership in an all. Okay, so he just wants to have sex with a robot. Fine, what have you. Right, let's just quickly bring down this here scientist, because the scientists... Are you by any chance going to be a better disguise for... Yeah. Now, that guy doesn't recognise me. Yeah, here we go. Scientists for the top floor is a way better disguise because that guy doesn't see through it anymore. So, I've got myself a Florida article that is 
What was that? Was that also a photo of him by any chance? No, Florida Man article. Newspaper with a picture of a food vendor known as Florida Man. Okay, probably not that useful. Sierra Knox and... Uh, yeah, here we go, that guy. Fine, so that's another place to get the footage of him, but also of her. So I wonder if I could kill her exactly the same way if I could just get her to come to the actual area over here. That'd be kind of cool. It's still very sensitive, and I've seen him use the eye drops a lot lately. He'll never admit to it, but it's getting worse. Let's just book a time and stealth fly him in, all right? All right, talk later. Meanwhile, there's something wrong with Nox's health. Those eye drops. His sight's getting worse over time, so there might be something we can do with that too. Anyway, I think we're actually about done with this building at this point, and I've already taken out the security cameras around here, so time to make our way back downstairs. This scientist should be able to walk straight back out again. All right, back outside disguised as a scientist. So, I know where I want to go next. I need to go and find her. All right, so... Know what we want to do here. That guy walks between, yeah, the camera guy and back over to here. In which case, best thing I can do is wait for him to get back over to this side. And then just toss a hammer over to this spot. He'll come down and investigate that. I can bring him down. He will never be located. Fine. In which case, yeah, just wait for him to be in the right spot. Here we go. I don't think he can see through. No, he shouldn't be able to see through anything. Okay, and right about in the corner there. There we go. That totally just got your attention. Yes, it flipping did. Now just wait for him to turn into the corner. Is anyone there? And boom. Down you come, my good man. You should be perfectly safe here, to be honest. So, race marshal. That guy has got to be allowed in the racetrack. That seems eminently reasonable. And his own friend will not recognise him. Fine. So we've infiltrated the track where there are still cars going round. It's just, yeah, not my actual target anymore. I can blend in as race marshal if I wanted to. But honestly, I don't need to. We are fine. So just walk past this guy. Time to figure out what's going on inside the racetrack. And where is my target now? Is she waiting for Flamingo Man, the blackmailer, to show up? Because if so, I might want to go and become the Flamingo Man. Alright, so right now I'm at the very north, and she is over there in the middle. Fine, let's just see what we've got going on where around here. More throwables. Never say no to a good throwable. But I tell you what, I feel like I've got a good disguise here. No one seems suspicious of me at all so far. And, oh, hello. Never mind. No one's allowed around here. Oh, I think I might have actually thrown away my crowbar as a throwable at some point. So I can't break through this door. Well, that's annoying. Now, what is this? Ah, wait, hang on. Is this by any chance a motel? Yeah, I'm guessing this is a motel that's been converted into a backstage area. I'm telling you, Miss Knox is going to be pissed. I did the pre-race checkup on her and... Well, let's just say she's got a bad case of intermittent explosive disorder. Poor Dr. Sorensen. First, he almost loses a patient to a seemingly harmless case of dehydration. Now, he has to deal with this guy suffering from urinary retention. <laughs> Not his day. Let's just hope he doesn't somehow screw up the revitalization procedure on Miss Knox. I know it's just a simple injection, but given his track record these past few days... Well... At least we know who's buying us beer tonight. Ain't that the truth? So, it seems Sierra Knox has jumped on the revitalization bandwagon and is scheduled for an injection of some sort. The doctor who is supposed to help her with the procedure is preoccupied with a patient who is unable to urinate. Curious situation, 47. Maybe you can speed things up. All right, that sounds like a good sort of thing. Although I may have already missed that, hang on. No, there we go. I just had to change over to the right mission. So, disguise myself as a medic. And yes, here we go. This area over here is indeed a hotel, which means this might be the place where the handover for... Ooh, there's the crowbar. Yep, new crowbar. Marvellous. This might be the spot where the actual blackmail occurs. By the way, are you a medic over there? Yeah, I need to sneak into the medical area. Fine, I need to find a doctor by themselves. At bare minimum, I wouldn't mind also having a little looksy at this hotel, so I've managed to make it round the back of the hotel without cracking open that gate. 
Uh, there is another gate here, but this one, this one's open. Spot on. Right. So what's going on in this hotel? And is this the same motel as the black mouse occurring? In fact, this is interesting. Global innovation race. Where there is a van locked away with a shovel and some silver. What is going on here? Okay. I may have found something a bit odd around the back here. Also, just crack that open. I don't think anyone will hear that or see that. Let's have a little look-see. What's going on in this here hotel? Right, up onto the roof. No one up here. But more silver stuff laid down on the ground. What is... Oh, hello. All right. One guy right here who is... Ah, I think you're asleep. Okay, you're nice and isolated to get hold of an appropriate disguise to let me wander wherever I want, I would say. Yeah. So how about we just get you to walk over to... Ooh. Would you mind walking all the way over there? Any chance that'd work? Yes. Yes, it would. You go and check that out nice and quick, my good man. There we go. Behind you, nice and... Oh! Oh, I'm so sorry. I just hit you with a hammer. You're technically not dead, which is quite frankly impressive, because I did just hit you with a hammer. Right, and now I'm allowed in the hotel. Great! Now, what's going on in the hotel? Why is this place locked down so thoroughly? Also, I may have been overthinking all of this silver stuff. I think they're just painting the place. Yeah, I'm guessing this is just a decent sniper spot for taking out her car when it's on, like, the home straight. That would make sense, yes. Right, now, back to needing myself a doctor. Kronstadt security can go where the hell they feel like. Good. Good disguise, except medical staff only. How firm are you about that? No, not firm at all. Mr. Durant, I'm gonna have to ask you to get a move on. I have Sierra Knox coming next for a post-waste IV vitamin boost. I don't want to keep her waiting. I'm not very clear, Doc. Surely you must be able to squeeze out a few drops, Mr. Durant. You've inhaled around a gallon of water by now. All right, there's my doctor. No one else around here. So that all works for me. In which case, one soda can, right in the corner if you'd be so kind. How about you go and investigate that nice and quickly. There you go. Just head around over there. Spot on. Subdue you. And we'll just find a nice... Oh, uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. That guy came out at exactly the wrong moment. Luckily, I assume he can't see through this, hopefully. So I'm now... A medic. Beautiful. Next up, find a lethal syringe. Which unfortunately would appear to be locked inside a cabinet. By the looks of the little hint there. Right. Well, I picked exactly the wrong moment to bring you down, but it seems to have worked out. Oh, Doctor. Oh, I'm so happy to see Hello. you. Hello. I'm guessing you're here to replace Dr. Sorensen. I, um, I forget your name, sorry. Dr. Reaper. Oh, yeah, of course. Well, whenever you're ready, you can page Miss Knox. I know she's very eager to get her vitamin boost. I'll prepare for her arrival. All right, and what is that there? Oh, medical cabinet key. Spot on, that's what I wanted. Now I don't need to break it open. Ah, but here we go. Cabinet. And I've got the key. I'm guessing there's going to be, for some reason, a modern lethal syringe in here. Lovely. Get rid of the current patient. Aha. The urinating man. That's absolutely fine. We can just bring him down nice and easy. No one seems to be in this part of the world. Yeah, just subdue him normally. That's that's probably fine. There we go. Job done. In fact, just for safety, we got ourselves a cabinet right there. I don't know what angle she's going to come from. So just in case, let's actually put both of these bodies right here in the cabinet. Actually, just this one. The other one's already in the toilet and Sierra Knox needs to be hidden somewhere as well. Paging Miss Knox. Paging Miss Sierra Knox. The doctor will see you now. Excellent work, 47. Sierra Knox should be on her way to the emergency area. Alright, so she'll make her way over here. Alright, in she comes. So, poison the IV drip with the modern lethal syringe. Beautiful. So that's been taken care of. That is now very, very lethal indeed. And in she comes. Hello there, Miss Knox. 
I'm ready for you. Let's do this. All right, so just lead her through to the back room, get her sat down, and then immediately murder her with the pre-prepared poison injection. Spot the flip on. Okay, who's this doctor and why is she here? Okay, would you mind just going? So what's in this thing anyway, Doc? Mostly floral extracts, hemlock, belladonna, aconite. It's designed to be fast and efficient. Fast and efficient. I like that. Wait, wait belladonna? Isn't that poisonous? Yes. Should I be concerned? I'm not. Just relax. It'll be over soon. So I can attach the IV, but yeah, there's, there's another doctor here all of a sudden. Okay, you heard like private physician or something. Well, whatever. Let's do this. Plug her wrist into one of them. Probably walk away at this point. Oh yeah, would you like to walk away right now too? Because that'd be perfect if you did. Yeah, that'd be very good. That's right. In fact, actually, how about you just come over here and we just actually huh? get rid of you at the same time? I don't feel... I don't feel well. Don't worry. It'll be over soon, Miss Knox. And Target has been eliminated. And her personal physician removed as well. Job flipping well done. done. Head for an exit and we'll speak again soon. Alright, shove her in there. Fair few unconscious bodies floating around, which is a bit of a shame. More than I'd like, but job done. Right, now we can just walk out of here. Beautiful. Wait, hang on. Helicopter. It's gotta be the helicopter, surely. Though I tell you what, there's so much I haven't flipping seen. Like, am I allowed in here as a doctor? No, the doctor is not allowed in here. But that's the pit, so yeah, there's got to be an entire plot revolving around, yeah, being pit crew and actually taking out her car during the race. Which is pretty damn cool, certainly. So this is the... Ah! This is actually the stand, so if you want to just disappear, you can just disappear into the crowd. Marvellous. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you can just basically uh, hide. Right here if you need to disappear. That's really cool, in fact, yes. In fact, yeah, this is the whole public area that I just hadn't really seen before. So stairs up to, yeah, the upper tiers of the South Stand. Am I a VIP, technically? Yes? No? Okay. Um, am I cool? Yes, apparently I am cool to be in here. And this is actually kind of like exhibition space. So there's Moses Lee, the driver who actually won the race. And of course, Sierra herself, who is now sadly very, very dead. So we can just nip in here. And we've got the Kronstag paddock. Oh, this is so cool. There's so much stuff. So much stuff I just wasn't involved with before. And, ooh, food could be poisoned as well. Can I step through here? No. Medical staff are not allowed through into that area. I'm assuming that's part of the, uh... That'll be part of the pits, right? Yeah, that's into the Kronstad garage, so I'm not allowed into that area, fine. Ah, and there's actually a driver's lounge, so you could totally 100% be a driver, potentially. Also, I need to use the crowd just to hide myself here. Make sure security doesn't see through my disguise. Uh, yep, have a little look see here. So we've got more bars, VIP bars. This is the, the Thwack paddock. Okay, so I could also be a thwack driver if that's what I felt like being. Can't help but notice upstairs here, Maxwell Rutter. Alright, wouldn't mind just giving that a little bit of a quick open. Now, Maxwell Rutter was mentioned to us. No, 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 it's fine, don't worry, don't worry. Just, you know, definitely not suspicious that door just opened by itself. Let me just hide in here for a second. Yeah, we've got ourselves Maxwell Rutter, who apparently... Holds a grudge. Am I allowed in here, by the way? Nope, that's trespassing. Right. Maxwell Rutter. Obviously, there's something we could potentially do with him. Ooh. I wonder if Moses Lee and Maxwell Rutter would be interested in having a chat with each other, potentially. Because both of them have a good incentive for Sierra to, uh, yeah, have a bit of a bad time during the race. Oh, there's so much stuff here. There's a ridiculously large amount of stuff, but I would guess that if you get to Moses Lee nice and early... Though, actually, hang on. Wouldn't Moses Lee already be racing? Because Sierra's racing the moment you arrive, so logically, Moses Lee would be two. Wait, is Moses Lee a... Is he a driver, or is he the boss of the team, who's like the Chinese team that was mentioned at the beginning? Ooh, I can't remember. And bloody hell, graphically, this is a real step up from the first Hitman. It is so busy. There's so much stuff. 
and it runs pretty nicely for the amount of stuff on screen too. It's very impressive. And tragically, I think that might be the, yeah, the helicopter escape over there, but it is marked as uh, locked. So you know what? Let's just walk out of the front door. That's a good thing to do as well. And just for next time, yeah, move over here. We got ourselves a, a side entrance right here, but that's going to be hard to break into, to be honest. Yeah, because there's just a couple of people watching that at all times, so we'll need some form of disguise before we can pull that one off. Unless, of course, there's employee only. That would need to be unlocked. So, with the lock pick, might be possible, but there's a lot of witnesses around here. Feels to me like that's not the most sensible way to do this. Still, this has all gone pretty well. I'm not sure whether this is Silent Assassin, but if it's not, it's going to be close. Let's get ourselves a score. And there we go. Walk out and get a bit more plot, probably, about the Shadow Client and Providence and all the rest of that business. So, mission stories completed, the new army, because, yeah, I actually made it into the robot demonstration, together with a few other bits and pieces. Yep, that was Silent Assassin, there was no evidence it was Silent Assassin on professional difficulties, that's worth even more points. The targets died, it was an accident, and there was poison, and, yep, new army was completed, briefcase was... I didn't have the briefcase, but whatever. And then, yeah, I just found a few bits and pieces, dotted around. Doctor 47, Paranoid Android, 40,000 XP. That's not bad for my first time through. And that should immediately get me, yep, Signed Assassin, a bunch of location mastery. So as a result, a bunch of stuff unlocked going forwards, including, most importantly, the flipping lock picks, which, yes, this game locks behind level two of your very first mission, so you're not allowed to actually start with the lock picks. And this has got me up to, yep, level seven. Level 8, actually. 8 of the local, so that is actually pretty decent. So, alright then. What do we have here? So now I can have an agency pickup in the boat rental hut. Oh, that's the locked building I couldn't get into, so I didn't actually have the lock pick. Fine. Kronstad reception. I can actually have a small item concealed on the magazine stand, so I just hope no one decides to read a magazine in the meantime. Podium storage, so small item on the bookshelf in the podium building, which I don't think I made it into. I think that was next to the VIP area. All right, and a hidden stash in the stands toilet. Right, no other stands are. I saw those blue stairs. That's just off the main area. No problem there. And I've unlocked the Jaeger 7 Mark II. So yeah, basically all the unlocks you had in the first game, most of them kind of reappear, but now they're Mark II. So that's absolutely fine. Jaeger Mark II and the whatever that is. I've always assumed that would just be pronounced Hawk. Maybe it's just the HWK. I don't know. Anyway, not interested in that because I've got better pistols already. And now I can actually carry items in together with the ICA briefcase, which I thought I already had. But no, I had the... Yeah, presumably this is like the special gold edition briefcase, but this is a different briefcase. So now I've got three different... Why have I unlocked a fish? Also, that is an ugly fish, but apparently I can hit people with a fish. Marvellous. There's the lock pick. Spot on. I can start at the Dolphin Fountain, so just outside the expo. I can start at the food stand, already disguised as a foodie person. And I can start at the marina, no disguise. Oh, I can start in the stands disguised as a flamingo. Very important indeed. Spot on. Here we go. Dead ends. Where's the plot going? Berlin. Shanghai. Montreal, we're bleeding operatives. Panic is spreading, and now we are axing our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle Miss Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. <laughs> you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't... <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadowboxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. 
Cobb was ground zero. First of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Yeah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Now, oh, come on. CIA, KGB, plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> if you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? Well, because you was head of security for one of you? That's, that's pretty obvious, actually. I swear to God. This hearts and flowers crap will get us both killed. Can't you see? Your so-called friend is working for them now. He's not the man you knew. This is his fight too, Olivia. Even if he doesn't realize it. Like it or not, 47 is our last and only lead on the partners. He needs to remember. He's coming for us. And unlike you, he won't hesitate. Just get me inside. Rico, I need a favor. There we go. And, of course, as people reminded me in the comments for the first video, yeah, we did actually know vaguely about his past and Olivia. They came up in the cutscene after Colorado. Colorado just wasn't a particularly good mission, so I'd totally forgotten that he was actually already there in the end of Colorado and we knew some of the information that was revealed at the beginning of Hitman 2. Sorry, totally forgot about that. My mistake. Now, of course, there's 10 million things I could do at this point. Yeah, if I tried to just cover every single thing you could do to both of these guys in one video, we would be here all flipping night. So, I'm not going to do that because, well, in all fairness, Hitman 2 is kind of about the joy of discovering things and figuring them out by yourself. So, you know, that was probably a couple of the more obvious ways of dealing with those two. There's clearly uh, a load flipping more, loads of things you can do. I'm particularly interested in whether you can make them interact with each other, what you can do while she's actually, you know, in the race. The pit crew, obviously, but there's one thing I kind of have to do. Because the rifle case is back from Hitman Blood Money. And I love the rifle case. The rifle case is wonderful. So, as I happen to know, there's an excellent little sniping spot right here. There's just one thing I do have to show off, obviously. Here we go. Sierra's just doing some lovely, lovely laps. She'll be around this corner at some point or other. So, how about we just retrieve our sniper rifle? There we flipping go. Yeah, I'd say a nice quick snipe from this spot right here. That would be just the thing. There she goes right there. Hang on. We'll get her on the next time round. So she is in the bright red car. Gotcha. All right, Sierra should be coming out of that corner any second, and she should be coming out of it wide, cause, hang on, and boom, there we go. Next up, Ooh, well, that's nice. Now, I'm kind of curious at this point. Can you take down, yeah, you can, you can take down more cars. You can definitely take down more cars, guys. Come back, please. Sorry, I need to, need to reload for a second. And, oh, you lucky bastards. Right, so she's dead, and you can totally take out other people as well. <laughs> okay, now that's interesting. Now this raises a much more interesting question. Can you force Sierra to win the race by taking out only her competitor? I'm so sorry, I didn't actually mean to kill you on that occasion. There we go. So that's Moses Lee dead. 47. So as a result of me doing that, Sierra now wins. Yes, yeah, she won. I've actually engineered her victory. Of course I am. Car drove my victory, didn't it? Couldn't miss the celebrations. 
How's the suit? The suit? Uh, yes. Fine. Uh, comfortable enough, I guess. Good. I have some ideas on how to make the sensor smaller. And the car handled well, I take it? Sure. Yeah, it drove me to victory, as you said. Indeed it did. The new AI steering routines work miracles on its performance. Yeah. So I, I have to go accept the trophy. Right. Well, have fun with that. We'll talk again later in the week. Sure, Dad. Ah, so she resents the fact that he basically thinks it's just, yeah, the car that won it. And now she's off to accept the trophy and is going to drink champagne from said trophy. And yeah, that could be uh, a very good way of killing her, poisoning the champagne and then engineering so she wins. Because otherwise, she won't win. The other guy will. Oh, that's so cool. You can actually change whether she wins or not. Though possibly there might be a more elegant way of doing it than just shooting a competitor. Yes. I think it is safe to say that this year's winner is a bit of a surprise winner to many of us. While they certainly weren't the favourites, they somehow managed to get to the top of the ladder over the course of these three days, which have seen a staggering number of accidents and related incidents. Oh yeah, there's something going on here. Sabotage that I could totally stop or reinforce or whatever. And here comes Sierra to come and collect the trophy. Marvellous, and no doubt drink from it. Marvellous. Absolutely flipping marvellous. You're going to do that? Oh, and there's the pyrotechnic display that we could totally fry her with. That'd be good too. And yep, yeah, drink from that there thing. Can I go actually go up to the podium? Can I push her off? No, I can't push her off. I can stand next to her though. Yay! Hooray for me! Alright, so I've just kind of run around the level, causing some trouble. So, you know, obviously there's a shape you can disguise yourself as, because it wouldn't be a Hitman game if there wasn't a shape somewhere. So he's probably got something special that he can do as well, because he's attached to the Thwack team. Maybe this is the owner of the Thwack team. There's multiple mechanics for her competitor and for her herself. There's a mysterious pale driver who's just sort of floating around as well. I'm not sure what he's for, but he could probably get in a car. I haven't actually seen any thwack people yet, but, you know, in theory, maybe you can be a thwack driver or a thwack mechanic. There's, there's clearly a slightly ridiculous amount of stuff that you can actually do here, by the way. So, we'll probably just finish you guys off as well. Oh, that was a good drama dive right there. That's better. Lovely. Yeah, there's a very, very ridiculous amount of stuff you can do in this level. And I absolutely flipping love it. But I don't want to show off all of it because, you know, part of the joy is figuring out this stuff for yourself. And I'm probably about to be killed regardless. So it's a bit of an academic thing, really. Go away! So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Miami. Not all of Miami, not even flipping close, but... Oh, yeah. I will say that is right up there with Sapienza. This is... A damn solid Hitman level. It's got everything you could want. There's clearly huge numbers of subplots and plots and scheming and things you can do and not do. And depending on what you do, you can change the outcome of the race, which changes everyone's routines. And if she wins, her father comes to see her. Maybe her dad comes and sees her regardless. But obviously, they have a very different conversation if she didn't win. Because he thinks the car is so good, it can basically just win by itself. So if she manages to not win in it, then he might have something very different to say. There's clearly something going on with his health. There's some form of blackmail going on with her as well. So there's the flamingo meeting to be done. There's, oh, there's so much stuff here. There's so much flipping stuff. This just feels like a classic Hitman level to me. Hitman 2, link in the description below. Definitely worth getting if you like the Hitman franchise. Both of these first two missions have been exactly how to do a Hitman game. This is like Blood Money. This is like Hitman of 2016. This is a damn good Hitman game. And we'll be back in a few days' time for, of course... Colombia, Santa Fortuna, and that looks like that's going to be very, very big and interesting as well. So, hopefully, you join me for that very, very soon indeed. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been Many a True Nerd, and this has been Hitman 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. No, sadly, I cannot be the Santa Claus of murder tonight. So, apparently, even though this thing is... Oh, no, no, you can't. No, you most certainly can't. Okay. Is that the symbol meaning I'm about to pull her over? Yep, there we are. There we... Oh. I feel like she didn't necessarily survive that. No, she's very dead.